Production Rock Quick Light. Right there on the end, he is a new guy singing with us today. He's been with us a few times, I believe. Um, uh, I think back in November, he sang bass for us. And then uh, um, about a week ago or so, he was with us for two nights. And so uh, y'all make a welcome from Durant, Oklahoma, or Calera, Oklahoma, Mr. Joseph Wolf. Yeah, all right. All right, standing next to him, he's done a baritone. Uh, he was uh, our original lead singer. Then he became our bass singer. Now he's our baritone singer tonight. So would you make welcome from Durant, Oklahoma, Mr. Daniel Wesley. Yeah. All right, standing between him and, and me is, is the bubble of the level. Hey, I'm kidding. <laughs> But he's doing a wonderful job tonight, or this afternoon. He makes his home in Panama, Oklahoma. Would you make welcome our lead singer, Mr. Moses Johnson? Yeah. All right, all right. My name is Jeremy Scott. I'm doing the tenor part. You can give me a hand, too, if you want to. I'm from Cribs, Oklahoma. All right. All right, and we do have somebody new out here today helping us out as well. Uh, would you make welcome Mr. Rufus Gull? He's our sound man today. Uh, yeah, he's doing a good job. We might have to buy him another bologna sandwich after a while for what he does. Yeah, Ruffles. Oh, Ruff, y'all call him Ruffles, all right? Yeah, he likes it. That's his name. Every sound man has to have a nickname. We're going to do some old songs here for y'all right quick, like if you don't mind. Here's just an old one called Hide Me Rock of Ages. Hi. 
as a child born of a virgin. We want you to know that he grew up with a purpose in his life, which was to die on the cross for your sins. Even though in the garden he prayed, he said, Father, let this bitter cup pass from me. But you know what? There was something that he knew. There was something that he foresaw. He saw that you and I was not going to be able to bring a sacrifice for our sins. So he knew that he must become the supreme sacrifice for me and you. So he said, Father, let this bitter cup pass from me. He said, well, not my will, but thy will be done. He saw you and I, my friend, dying and going to hell because he knew that we would not do our best to live the life that we're supposed to. And look at us today. It was said twice last night. Everybody is so excited about this eclipse that's about to take place. But when it comes to Jesus Christ and the church, they're not excited, are they? Thousands of people, we were told, were supposed to gather in this area here because of tomorrow. But thousands of people cannot gather to hear the word of God. They cannot be excited about Jesus like they're supposed to be. Christians, we're supposed to be excited about the word of God. We call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. Then why can't we be excited? When we get excited about, about a basketball game, we get excited about a football game, we get excited about baseball games, we get excited about food sometimes, don't we? But we can't get excited about Jesus. We should be ashamed of ourselves to call ourselves followers of Jesus if we can't be excited about Jesus. But today, folks, the Bible says that today you can make it right. You can come to know Jesus if you've never known him as your Lord and Savior today. The Bible said that today is the accepted time unto salvation. Bible tells us that there is no other name because there's a lot of people out here preaching different religions. Saying that all these different roads are the way to Jesus, but there is only one way, folks. That is to repentance. You must repent of all the things that you've ever done. But first of all, the Holy Spirit has to come. And it must break your heart to let you know where you stand as a sinner. That without Jesus, that you're not going to make heaven, but you're going to go to hell. Folks, if that's happening today, then don't hold back. Let Jesus come into your life today. Let him be the savior of your life. It's not going to be an easy road, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to be worth it all when the trumpet sounds. Amen. That's all I'm going to tell you today. If you want to pray after a while, I'll pray with you. If you want to understand more about salvation, we'll sit and talk with you about salvation. But don't leave here today without knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to do a couple more songs and we'll get off here for a little bit and, and take a break. When she told us we had it from two to five, I, I, I sat and thought for a little bit. I was like, that's three hours worth of singing. I barely do an hour and a half of singing. <laughs> but... But I, I, I messaged her, I said, you scared me there for a little bit. I didn't know what we was going to do. But she said, well, y'all can take a break in between times. So, so we'll do that. And, and uh, there's some concessions over here. Uh, go to each concession and look at some things. We have CDs over there. Um, if you've not bought a CD from us yet, we have CDs over there for $15. We have T-shirts over there. I don't know what size we have left. Might be just a fry bread size. How do we know what the fry bread sizes are? Yeah, from a 3X to a 5X. But we have those for $20, and we have some kids' t-shirts for uh, $10. So y'all come over there and buy some stuff from us and the other vendors. You know, that's what helps us get along down the road, and it helps us to keep going and administering the way we do. So all right, we're going to do another song here. Uh, everybody, if you want to sing with us, you're, uh, go ahead and sing. You're not going to scare us. Uh, if you get off tune, that's all right. So do these guys. It ain't going to bother us at all. <laughs> But here's an old tune that says, I'll fly away.
and Daniel walked with lions Saying, wake up, Samson, wake up When Delilah cut his hair And I saw it
He's more of a musician. He plays the bass guitar, plays, he can play the regular six string guitar, plays the piano, plays the drums, plays the fiddle, plays with his toes. <laughs> so don't shake his hands because he don't wash them. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> But, but I tell you what, he, uh, he's been doing a wonderful job singing with us. And, and uh, last year, our, our bass singer, he was going to retire because he was up there in age. He was about 75 years old, so he wanted to retire. And so we were looking around, and I'd asked Joe a few times, I said, would you want to sing? He said, I don't know. I just don't know. He said, I, I'm not a singer. And uh, he said, I hadn't sing much. So I said, well, sometimes you just have to get out there and try it and do what you can, and I said, once you start singing, it'll all come to you. But uh, he's been doing a good job. What do y'all think so far about Joseph Wolf? Yeah, all right, all right. If you wasn't here a while ago, I'll go ahead and introduce the group one more time. And uh, like I say, it's probably not that important, but I know a lot of people like to know our names at times. And so right here doing the bear, oh yeah, we have a new old man. Yeah, he is. He's the oldest one in this group right now. He's at 64 years old at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> but y'all may welcome our baritone man, Mr. Daniel Billy. No, I'm kidding. Daniel Wesley. <laughs> I tell you what, we have another guy that sings with us. His name is Herb. But y'all keep him in prayers, would y'all? The other day, um, he's been having, he's a real bad diabetic, so he's been having health issues. And so um, the other day they took him in and they put a port in his in his chest, I believe it is. And so uh, he's been having to do a dialysis. So he's been in the hospital for about a whole week. So um, I was talking with him a while ago. And so he's talking about maybe getting out tomorrow. Uh, so y'all keep him in prayer is what you, um, we don't know what the future is with him, with us. But um, only God knows and only God will give him the strength to make it through uh, to be able to sing again. But at the time we, we have his twin brother there, Daniel, Daniel Billy, uh, but, <laughs> but, but we like to tease them because when they stand beside each other, they look like those two old black birds on them cartoon they used to call Heckle and Jekyll. Y'all remember them? Yeah, some of you? All right, a few of you. Yeah, yeah, that old guy out there. I mean, that young guy back there waving his hand. He knows Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah, now they look like Jekyll and Hyde up here. But, but... <laughs> Anyways, this guy right here doing the lead part. Y'all may welcome Mr. Moses Johnson. Yeah, Moses. All right. My name is Jeremy Scott, and I'm from Cribs, Oklahoma. You can give me a hand, too, if you want to. I do the tenor part for the group. And so um, we're doing the best. <laughs> I heard that. We're doing the best that we can to make it through. Um, some of these songs, uh, most of us don't lead them. And so now that Herb's not here, we're having to do the best that we can to try to do the songs. And, and so, um, like I say, we're, I told a guy last night, we're kind of like a farming system. We have it today, but tomorrow you come back, it's going to be gone. So so um, we're, we're just doing the best that we can to make it through with these songs. Um, let me see here. I don't want to do anything that's going to be too high at the moment. No. You know, earlier um, we were talking about grace a while ago, and then and Brother Dunifin there, he came up and, and spoke about grace for a little bit. But you know, I believe that sometimes that we as Christians, we can be very critical of other people. We can be very critical of our, of our friends and our families. To even say that at times that they don't belong in our church. But you know, it's not our church. It's God's church. But the Bible tells us this, folks. It tells us that we must love one to another as God has also loved us. So the thing is, when we look in, in Peter, he tells us that we are to share God's word, but we are to share it with a loving heart. So I just want to share with you today with a loving heart that wherever you stand with God, I don't condemn you for it. But I ask that you look at your own life today and see where you stand with Jesus. If you have things there that's in your life that doesn't belong, then come back to Jesus. Forget about the things that are there and, and walk away from it and come back to Jesus. 
That's what this next song talks about. We can be very critical of a whole lot of things. But we must look at ourselves at one time where we were at one time. Many of us were alcoholics. Many of us were drug addicts. So how is it that we can condemn another drug addict, another alcoholic? We don't have that right to. But we are here to share the word of God with people. To tell them that Jesus loves them. To tell them that Jesus cares for them. We want you to hear this because every once in a while, sometimes we do slip and fall as Christians. But we have a moment of grace. Listen to this song. Get free. Her accusers had stones in their hands. And they turned to Jesus just to see what he'd say. And the Lord just rode in the sand. Well, they all walked away when they heard him say, Let the sin free cast the first stone. Then with tears on her face, her past was erased, and she stood in a moment of grace. Now the thief on the cross knew his life was lost, and he must pay for the crimes of his past. He had done
try this one here. Never been this homesick. <laughs> afternoon and he come all the way over here just to see me sing and buy me a burger. <laughs> now that is something. <laughs> no, I just, I love my family. I love all of them. I love everything that they do and you know, just so thankful that uh, the Lord gives you family like that. Family that you can love, family uh, that you're proud of and you know, a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't get family like that. There's there's people who are, uh, there's kids who are being abused and, uh, and all this stuff. And I'm so, I'm so thankful for my parents for raising me up in a Christian home and telling me about uh, Jesus and telling me about uh, everything that God did, everything that God created and, uh, and what Jesus did for them. And it wasn't until I got older when I began to realize how much Jesus had done for me. And, you know, I grew up in church. Church was something that uh, we were forced to go. Our family or um, our family uh, made us go to church. And I'm so thankful this afternoon that they did. Because if it wasn't for them, then I probably wouldn't be where I am today. They told me about Jesus. And I had to figure out on my own what he is fully capable of doing. 
what he has done in my life. And just like each and every one of you, you all have sins that you're not proud of. You all have uh, things that you have done that really hurt family. And I'm no different. I'm no different. I've, I've been there. I've hurt family. But you know, it's, it's, it's awesome how, how Jesus looks after you. How he uh, just tends to mold your life. And sometimes you don't even see it. And that's, that's what's so awesome about our Lord. You know, we just, we just uh, celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, that's just one day. It's an everyday thing. If you're a child of the Lord, it's an everyday celebration that we celebrate the resurrection. It's an everyday thing when we celebrate when our Lord was born. And so, you know, it's just amazing how, how we often see Christian people walk around with a frown on their face. Folks, I don't know where you stand with Jesus today. But I hope he lives in your heart. That's why we do what we do. We don't, we don't do this to show off. We don't do this to try to outdo other people. This is a ministry that the Lord has given each and every one of us up here on stage. And He can do these things in your life if you just allow Him and I know that's hard at times. Sometimes it's hard to get our own selves out of the way and let God work. But if we just allow ourselves to get out of the way, then you're going to be you're going to be seeing the things that you never ever thought in your life that you would be doing. When I used to sing with my family a long time ago, I was the shyest person. I would stand back and let them do the talking. And the only time I would, the only thing I would do was sing. I never wanted to speak about anything. I didn't ever want to do any of that stuff. But I'm so thankful today that I have somebody to talk about. I have somebody uh, that loves me, somebody that loves you, and I know the good things that he's going to do in my life. Why? Because I trust him. I trust him. And it's all about having faith. And sometimes it's, people say it's easier said than done than trusting the Lord. And I'll be the first to admit, sometimes it is. In bad situations, sometimes it's just so hard to trust in Jesus. We've all been there a time or two. We've all been there where we tried to handle situations on our own. And then what happens? We mess it up. But I'm just so grateful that the Lord allowed us to be here today. Just to worship and praise Him on this beautiful Sunday. This is what it's all about, folks. We can see all these entertainers. You'll see people lined up from here all the way to the road. But when it comes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you'll see what you see right now. The street's empty. Folks, we're not here to sing to a big crowd. The Lord has us here for some reason. The Lord has us here because we don't know what you're going through. And we just hope that we can just be that encouragement to you today and uplift your spirits. That whatever you may be going through today, that maybe we can just put that little smile on your face today. 
and maybe you'll realize that everything's going to be all right. Because we have a God who loves us. We have a God who just wraps his arms around us and he tells us it's okay. Now, I don't know what Jeremy has going on right now, but we're going to do our next song here. And uh, Just listen to the words of all these songs, and I hope they bless your heart this afternoon. I hope it uplifts your spirits and that you go home better than you came. And that's all we hope for. Thank you. How many know that God's not just good, but he's great? Amen? Yeah, let me hear y'all. Let me hear y'all say amen. Come on now. If we were at a ball game, you'd be hollering louder than that. If you were watching your soap operas, you'd be screaming louder than that. Man, let me hear it one more time. Amen? Amen.
a song right now. You better not. Yeah. <laughs> and how 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 many of you have seen an old man dance around when he sings? Well, we got one of those up here to, to this afternoon. And we're going to turn him loose on this song. And if you really enjoy him, then you let him know about it. Because we're going to be leaving here in a few minutes. we got to get him back to the nursing home. <laughs> so we're going to turn Dan loose on a song entitled, Get Away, Jordan. For we do not grieve as those who have no hope. You and I, we call ourselves children of God, then we have hope. It doesn't say that we can't cry, but it says that we don't grieve as those who have no hope. What he's saying is this, because we have hope in Jesus, one day we're going to see those who are asleep. We have many loved ones who have crossed over this past couple of years. And over the, the last 30 or 100 years, however long it's been for some of us. But one day, I'm telling you, folks, the Bible says that one day the, the skies are going to peel away on the eastern side. The trump is going to sound. And it says those that are asleep in Jesus, they're going to be the ones to rise first. And those of us that are alive, 
who remain on this earth will be caught up behind them to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. I can't wait till that time. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I think about that time because I have a mama over there. I have a grandma who's over there who taught me how to love Jesus, who showed me a way that I can love Jesus when I hurt. I don't know about you, a lot of people make up excuses to not go to church. But I had a grandmama who told me, baby, I love Jesus with all my heart. She didn't just say it, but she showed it. In a time that we, that we last took her to the hospital was when we left church. Because the doctors told her, hey, you can't be going outside your home. You have to stay in home. But what she say? I'm going to be ready for church in the morning. Come pick me up. Who knew that that would be the last time that we'd see Grandma in the church? We had to stop the 11 o'clock service because we had to rush Grandma to the hospital. But the doctors had said, Lorraine, you stay home. You can't be going to church. But she said, I love Jesus too much. And I'm going to be at church. Many of us, we stub our toe and we call the pastor. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I have a headache. I'm not going to make it. Oh, my stomach hurts. I'm not going to make it. Grandma knew if she stepped outside of those doors that she would surely die. But she wanted to hear what God had to say. Today, I'm so thankful that she put that in my heart, that she showed me that in life. That no matter what you go through, as long as you love Jesus, that's all that matters. One day I'm going to see them again, as this song says, I'm going to rise up from my grave. Yeah. Oh. 
super fan. Cross. 